Hello and welcome to a very rare ULA edition of Mark Fix's stuff. This video is really a sort of a sales aid for the auction I'm going to put up for this machine which um, has a rare ULA um, that doesn't seem to get hot so um, due to me having a bit of a bad back I've not been able to get up into the loft to get any other titles than the ones you see in front of me so I've tested those and they all load. Um, that's basically it really. The uh, membrane gave up the ghost so see the blue tails I've um, actually replaced that so that's new but that's all I've done to this machine um, I've not composite modded composite modded composite modded it <laughs> or, or anything like that it loads great from tape um, but the weird thing is that the ULA doesn't seem to get discernibly hot uh, and that's something I'm going to demonstrate in this video Okay, so um, this game has been running um, for a good hour and a half now. It's um, Roadrunner um, and Wily e. Coyote. I've got to admit, it's a pretty dire game. But um, I just wanted to show you that after a considerable amount of time running software, that the um, temperature on the ULA, the Saga ULA, is um, pretty, pretty uh, negligible. So, um, first off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this temperature probe to the heatsink so that you can see what sort of temperature we're getting off the heatsink about there it's 35 probably be hotter if we put it towards the over there yeah it comes up to about 36 37 38 and again if I remove the probe and give it a wave to cool it down it'll go to about 24 degrees which is roughly what we've got in this room because these lights are quite warm so if I go over to the lights see the temperature starting to go up so um, I'm going to move away from those because I'm sweating now so uh, yeah give it a little wave okay now onto the ULA as you can see it's still running here So dead center in the ULA, 29. Probably get up to 30 if I move over here. So that's about 30 degrees. And uh, you guys know that a normal ULA would be really rather hotter than 30 degrees. Okay, um, in comparison, if I take the probe off, do a little wave. Hello. And um, let's go and pop it onto the CPU, SGS CPU. The CPU's 35, 36, 37, 38, so um, 39, which is probably running a bit hotter than the, the heatsink. Okay, so I thought you geeks and geekesses might enjoy watching it load. I've been asked a few questions about what the colour reproduction and the uh, display quality is like compared to other spectrums, and I'm really not discerning enough to um, to show you that. So I thought it might be a good idea to show you it loading something. So here we go, there's load, and then you can see the colours. Um, I've taken some pains to ensure that the white balance is um, correct um, on the camera. So um, I've used this as a white reference point when I've just had a white paper and white border um, and set the white balance to that so uh, we should be able to see some of the loading and I think although it's probably boring for most people I'm going to um, let this actually load up you can see some slight patterning in the dark areas that's more pronounced on the camera than actually on the screen and um, yeah it's a lot darker on the screen but the uh, camera decides it's going to do something automatically to that you know, full disclosure, it is there, and I have seen it on other spectrums. So I'm not sure if it's something that's um, affected by this ULA or not. Probably because the video signal is generated by the ULA. Okay, and we are loading a game called Inspector Hecti in the Interchange by High Tech Software, and um, actually bought this back in the day, believe it or not, uh, for three pounds ninety nine. And guess what? I've never ever loaded it. Bought it from um, a shop called Reader's Dream on the Harlington Road West in Felton. TW14. Yeah, so 
so uh, it's probably quite a good game but you know I think I bought this when it was shutting down so right so written by David Spicer and Jason Brashill mm, very good so yeah why, why am I selling this well um, it was in my two fix pile um, about probably about 12 spectrums deep and um, opened it up and I saw the sticker which I will show you in a moment and then I noticed that I'd never seen this ULA before which um, was quite fascinating to me and I put a post up in the Spectrum Forever group on Facebook with nearly 2,000 or maybe even more than 2,000 members right now and uh, no one had seen one of these in the wild although they're mentioned quite frequently in the later revisions of the service manuals um, nobody's actually seen one so this looks like it was released into the wild probably to a controlled customer um, with this sticker inside to make sure that um, people returned it rather than taking it to Uncle Bob's retro repair shop up the road they would go what the bloody hell is that why are all the passive components missing in fact I'm not going to video the board I've got some pictures of the board which I'll insert as I'm talking now it makes more sense and saves time so uh, yeah it works great actually um, a bit nervous because I've never loaded this Inspector Hecti um, tape using this tape deck um, I used another tape deck for loading them all earlier uh, but that bit the dust decided so I think the band finally had it in that one but um, yes so why am I selling it? I need the money to repair my kitchen which I had a flood if you follow my videos you'll probably hear me moaning about my flood over and over again and this was in the to repair pile so although the hoarder in me desperately desperately wants to keep it the um, the father and husband in me desperately needs to fix the ceiling and the floor and the walls in the flooded kitchen so uh, there you have it please excuse the mobile phone going off in the background I think I might go over and um, close this curtain so you can see a picture of me being fat Right, not entirely sure what's happened there, but it's not loaded, and it's loaded, yay! Okay, yeah, I thought it was because I turned my back. <laughs> um, that thing that usually happens. Hang on. Too much of a reflection. But yeah, there is a bit of patterning there on that screen. Um, let's see, zero for options. Uh, three, define keys. Uh, right will be P, left will be O, down will be A, Q will be up and fire, we'll use enter, there we go, pause, who knows, space, quit, T, -t for a timeout, okay, fire to start, password, nope, level one name, nope, alright, so um, we're in the game proper, as they used to say I'm going for gold, and I'm dead, where am I actually, oh that's me, oh, okay, any ideas what I'm meant to do here? Oh, it's a tile game like Pipe Mania. Okay. I see. Ah. Anyway, you can see it works at the end of the day. Um, yeah, this striping is more pronounced on the camera again. Um, but, you know, it loads, it works, it does all the bits and bobs. Um, so, yeah, I'd, I'd like someone to buy this who can actually investigate this ULA rather than me. And all I can do really is load games on it and tell you how hot it gets. This is a standard Ferranti ULA Spectrum. So let me just throw some light on that. Dun, dun, dun. Where's the... Oh yeah. Just stick a bit of light on that. And we can see that um, those funny vertical striations are actually apparent even on this one. So maybe I was over sensitive when I was looking for that on the the uh, Amy one. So, uh, oh blimey, that is bright. So the reason I've stuck the bright light on is I thought I should not be so blinking lazy and perhaps show you the temperature difference. 
between the ULAs. So uh, I actually got that. Just about see that, can't you? Just see if I can change the white balance so it doesn't look like we're on the sun. Yeah, that's better. Right, okay. So I will take the probe. We can see we're at about 23, 24. Um, so yeah, that's about the normal temperature for in this room. Um, the reason I loaded Roadrunner again is because I wanted to. Whoops, not the camera. I wanted to show you that the temperature of the components inside is different running the same software. So um, first, we'll have a look at the heatsink. Touch it on the corner there. So on the heatsink, we're already at about 46 degrees centigrade. That probably got a 47. I've held it for ages. Yeah, there we go. 47 degrees centigrade. Take the probe off. So you see, I'm not cheating. Give it a shake. Okay, so uh, that would eventually go down. It takes a little while. It's a cheap temperature probe. Obviously, this isn't calibrated to real temperatures, but it's calibrated to itself, so um, it's relative. So here we go with the ULA. Are you ready? Up to 35, 36. I reckon there's a creep up to about 37, 38. So comparatively speaking, yeah, about 38. Might even make it to 39. When you test these things, you're meant to use a compound. It's gone to 40, 41. That um, allows the heat transfer, but um, yeah, you can see a significant difference. It's quite hard to lean over here. 43. I'm not going to sit here for hours, but uh, yeah. And um, whilst the other machine had been on for about an hour and a half with the Roadrunner software loaded, um, this has probably been on for about 12 minutes. It's at 46, 47. So we can see that Ferranti ULA actually outputs quite a lot more heat. So that's quite interesting. Um, I'll remove the probe now, as you can see. Okay, so this really is goodbye from me. So uh, yeah, subscribe to get your fix. Auction link down there. Please buy this. It's a bit of Spectrum history. It'd be better off in someone else's hands. Um, and also, um, to be honest, I don't know what I'm doing with it. So, uh, goodbye everybody. Bye.